Ian in Hook, Hampshire, England. You guys have some great names for towns over there. I love it. He says, hey, thanks for the fantastic insight into the world of audio. My pleasure, sir. Copper Magazine, which is what we publish, is also a great read, entertaining, and a valuable resource for the audio community. Thank you. Our editor, Frank Doris, just puts his heart and soul into that. And if you have yet to subscribe to Copper Magazine, just do it. If you're into music, if you're into hi-fi, community, it's the best magazine out there. There is no ads. No one's going to spam you. you. Just sign up for Copper Magazine. Go to psaudio.com and you'll find Copper Magazine and then just sign up. It comes out once every two weeks and it is chock full with great articles about musicians. Uh, I mean, just I can't, I can't talk more highly about it. And it's our gift to the Hi-Fi family, to the Hi-Fi community. Copper Magazine. Yep, thank you. Okay, there's, there's my shameless pitch for my free magazine with no ads. All right, okay. All right, all right. Where, where are we? Um, anyway, after buying some nice quality Vandam Hi-Fi something or other, um, nine, uh, oh, uh, nine gauge speaker cables for runs and speaker jumpers, I started to look at spade and banana connectors from various companies. Now, most companies seem reluctant to print or mention the materials underneath the gold or the silver plating. Are we simply buying speakers with quality speaker terminals and nice cable only to be terminating it with chunks of brass under a coat of plating? And if so, will it make a large difference to make the investment in some proven solid connectors? Whoa, can of worms time. <laughs> Well, here's where I go against most of the audiophile community. I think you want to have a quality connector. We buy quality connectors and put them on our equipment, and we make a point of it. We make sure that they are made of good materials, but they are not critical to the sound. Now, I know there's going to be people jumping out of their skins and saying that they had exactly uh, an opposite difference. And yeah, I've heard like um, when we spend 50 or 60 bucks on a WBT or a, a Cardis connector, do I think I hear a difference? Yeah, I think I probably do. Is it worth that kind of money and hassle and grief? I don't think so. So most, first off, people talk about hey, this one's pure copper and it's plated over it. And that's really hard to do. And pure copper is kind of soft. So brass adds tin, if I remember right. I think it's, yeah, I think it's copper and tin, if I, if I remember right. Don't quote me on that or get all upset if I'm wrong, but that's just what's in my old memory. Um, and, and it hardens it. So then there's various qualities of brass. But don't start thinking about brass that is what makes up most of our connectors as being something bad, like a, a, like a, a tin cup or a, a, a nasty brass thing. It's not. It's, it's a fine material. Most of the current is flowing in the outside of it anyway. The gold is on there to make sure it doesn't oxidize and, or silver or whatever. And those materials, by the way, do make a difference in the way things sound. Whether it's on the connector or not, that little bit, eh, I'm not buying it. Yes, people will argue with me about it all the time, but look, I'm as crazy a loon as anyone in this industry, but I also have my <laughs> limitations to where, you know, you gotta draw a line somewhere. Cables, hell yes, they make a big difference. Do the little connectors on the end, they make a little difference. So I'm a common sense kind of person. For my money, I'll take the big bang buck changes, right? Cables, speakers, electronics, all make a huge difference. Connectors, the quality of the feet, all those little things. Yeah, but is it worth your time? It ain't worth my time. Anyway, that's me, okay. <laughs> I'm going to get hate mail on this. All right, I'll talk to you later. Thanks. Bye.